All right, so now we're recording. Uh, good morning. So this is the probability theory review class. And uh, yeah, the goal is just to um, to answer your questions. Um, before we do that, let me just summarize um, what I think about this class on probability theory review, because essentially the math that we review here is probably something that you've seen uh, eight, nine times in classes before, right? You've seen the sum rule before, you've seen how to compute moments and how to, uh, you've also seen Bayes rule. Um, personally, I already had Bayes rule in uh, in high school, but I never, I mean, we never paid any attention to it, right? Um, so my personal, uh, history where, where I got interested in Bayesian uh, inference is, is probably around 2005. I, I went actually to school here in uh, the University in Eindhoven, uh, so about 150 years ago. And uh, so I, I also got classes just like you on uh, speech processing and communication systems, and we would do everything with probability theory. So we would write down, so I measure this signal X of T plus N of T. This is a speech signal, and N of T is the noise. And I would always wonder, where's, where does the noise come from in the world, right? I mean, is there some source that makes the noise? And um, and I also got classes in, uh, in statistics, right, about uh, significance testing and, uh, and p-values and alpha values, and it was just all very complicated. And uh, so in about, 2003 or 2006, I read uh, this uh, little book. It's really just a little book. It's called Data Analysis, a Bayesian tutorial. You can still uh, get it. And um, I mean, the whole book is 200 pages. And uh, the first 100 pages, you learn basically everything you need to know about Bayesian analysis. And But in the, the interesting thing to me was the, uh, the preface, because the first paragraph in the preface the author writes, well, uh, let me tell you my uh, my experience. Uh, as an undergraduate, I uh, I took probability theory classes and that was all, it made sense, but it was useless because it was always just for toy problems, right? Throwing a coin and uh, what's the probability you throw a five? And then there were classes on statistics, how to conduct experiments and draw conclusions from it. And those, um, uh, classes were mostly about uh, applying recipes. Um, I hear a lot of noise all of a sudden. <laughs> so, so somebody please mute. Um, so those uh, uh, classes were all about applying recipes that uh, were hard to understand. And uh, and then he goes on and say, well, there is a, it turns out um, if you, want to do statistics properly, you can just use your, your, your original probability theory. You can just use your sum and product rules. And there's actually a very good reason for it, um, because the axioms of probability theory, the sum and product rules, aren't just rules that, well, you, you should start from saying, okay, let's say that these are the mathematical rules and now we start to build a theory. But the sum and product rules can be derived from even more basic assumptions about rational reasoning, about reasoning when there is uncertainty. And almost everything in science is about reasoning with uncertainties. So um, you could say that probability is really the uh, the language of, of science. And so there is a, another book that I'd like to show you, uh, Edwin Jane's Probability Theory, The Logic of Science. This is a really a fantastic book. This is a really thick book, by the way. Um, but that book, uh, um, I uh, started to read and never finished the whole book. Few people do, but um, uh, it's it's actually very readable. And uh, it, that develops Bayesian probability theory um, as a method for reasoning about data, about uh, events about uh, statements uh, when there is uncertainty. And Bayesian or machine learning is just an application. 
and so is reinforcement learning, and so is uh, statistics. And uh, in fact, as he shows, uh, also is communication theory and quantum uh, mechanics. These are all applications of probability theory. So that makes probability theory really uh, one of the really basic um, uh, mathematical tools for science. Um, so to me, that is the essence of this lesson. It's not, it, it, on the one hand, I just give you a review of the, the rules, but I want to also um, tell you that it's, it's, it's not so much about the math, it's about the interpretation that's really important. And it's an interpretation that you don't hear a lot about. Right? Um, probability should not really be in interpreted as a relative frequency of occurrences. Probabilities are states of knowledge. They are beliefs. And then we can do a uh, tremendous amount of uh, really practical work and really uh, uh, useful work with uh, probability theory. And we will develop all our machine learning in the class with this, uh, with this tool. So it's also not necessary that you understand this viewpoint completely at this point, uh, because we were, the next class we're going to derive Bayesian machine learning from probability theory, and the next class after that, we're going to apply it. So it will come back over and over again. Um, but um, so that, yeah, that's the, uh, the, the, the main thing about this class. I ask you to read this passage in, in uh, Katitsha. Now, I didn't do that with the intention that you can repeat the argument or uh, that you can uh, read it critically and uh, find out where he goes wrong or where it's uh, it's I just ask you to read it so you have an understanding of how the type of reasoning goes how he basically makes more fundamental assumptions about logic reasoning rational reasoning and then from that derives some product rules um, and um, so if you just just to appreciate that kind of derivation, that's enough for me. I'm not going to ask at the uh, exam to uh, to derive the summer product rules, of course. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to say about this class, or so sort of like a big meta story. Um, but if there are any other questions, uh, or any particulars, so uh, go ahead. Um, just raise your hand or, or or write something in the chat. I don't see anybody having any questions. So let me ask you then. Uh, it, it could be that everything is clear, but is 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 it really? Um, or uh, is anybody just shy and doesn't want to uh, to raise his hand yet? Might be um, useful for future classes that you sort of write down any questions you might have while reading the material, while going through the material, going through the exercises. Um, and then we can work through your list of questions during these live classes. Yeah, I, I see uh, a question here about speech. I think that that question um, sort of hits it, from my viewpoint, it hits this viewpoint uh, Let's say right in the uh, it's the, <laughs> just, uh, nails it right in the middle, right? Um, is a speech a deterministic signal or a random signal? Well, the from my viewpoint, it's uh, it's 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 both or neither. Um, I would say. If, if 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 you have a perfect microphone and you uh, you can perfectly record my speech signal, so out go out of my microphone comes just a string of numbers. Well, what is determinist? What is random about it? It's a string of numbers, and each number has a, has, a, has an exact value. It's completely deterministic. So the speech signal, to me, once you know it, it's a completely deterministic signal. It's just that when you do not know it yet, so uh, we're talking here about your state of knowledge, when you haven't recorded it yet, or 
when you have uh, an imperfect microphone, right? So you know that what the microphone uh, records is not exactly <laughs> the same speech signal that the source uh, produces. Well, then there is some uncertainty about what exactly the speech signal is. So if we want to write down that uncertainty, we want to quantify that, then we have to write down probabilities for the probability distribution over all the possible realizations of that speech signal, right? And uh, so in, uh, from that viewpoint, um, <clears throat> the pro probability distribution over all possible realizations of the speech signal would be the right representation. That's not to say that the speech signal itself is random or, or not random. Um, I think if we write down a probability distribution over speech signals, that is a distrib that's that's uh, uh, an, an acknowledgement that we are not certain what the speech signal is. Right? It doesn't mean that the speech signal itself is random. It's just uh, an acknowledgement that our state of knowledge about that speech signal is uh, is is uncertain. So randomness is not something that uh, or, or probabilities are not, is not something that occurs in nature. It describes your state of knowledge or my state of knowledge. It's not that, um, uh, yeah, probabilities uh, just just uh, yeah, occur in nature. Yeah, okay, then I see a question. Uh, I, I hope I answered the question appropriately. And then, I see an, a remark which says, I'm trying to grasp the chapter in Katisha's book completely. Um, that's great. <laughs> um, what, um, th then you will run into issues like, uh, like I just saw on Piazza, what is a dense set? And if you then go to Wikipedia, you, yeah, you'll see this is a concept from topology. I didn't study topology, so I, I am not an authority in, in telling you what a dense set is. Personally, um, I've read about three or four of these types of derivations of uh, the seven product rules by Katitsha. Um, one of the original ones is uh, from this booklet from Richard Cox. Right, this is a booklet from 1961. It's a very thin booklet. And uh, so this is also what Katitsha refers to. Um, so this is a, a different derivation, but these are also this is also contains the derivation of seven product rules in 1961 from yeah, what we call the axiomatic derivation from more primitive assumptions about rational reasoning. Um, then over time, slowly over time, um, these more primitive assumptions, uh, people have been able to get away with fewer of those assumptions, right? And so Katitsha's derivation is simpler than this derivation. And hopefully in, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 years, there may even be a, a more simple derivation. Um, but um, so what, what I would suggest, at least for this class, is that you kind of appreciate the style of um, a derivation that there are underlying more primitive assumptions that should make sense to you, and that you know by very careful reasoning, guys like Kachicha and Richard Cox are able to derive from that uh, the rules of uh, probability theory, or the axio uh, axioms of probability theory. Is that okay? Right, so uh, by no means would I ask you to uh, uh, to critically review the derivation if it's correct, right? Um, I, I know there are a couple of these derivations from different underlying primitives, and yeah, there's a whole literature on, uh, you know, of specialists who uh, some people say, well, this, this 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 argument is not entirely correct, and others say, no, it is. So that's not what we are uh, about in this class. Let's see. Um, uh, 
um, I, I saw a hand by uh, G. Bala. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, so uh, I just uh, I had a, a quick I was watching the uh, uh, Bayesian machine learning framework video um, and uh, I just had a quick doubt there. So uh, uh, is, should I ask that doubt uh, today or should I hold it for the next uh, Q&A that uh, or is it OK if I um, ask you that out now? Um, well, um, how about if you just ask it now, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. so uh, I, this was just a clarification kind of a point. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the last step, step which is the uh, prediction uh, space, so there uh, when we're trying to predict the next observation given the data that we have, so uh, you go on to say that uh, from that we extend the conversation and then we uh, add the uh, we do like a marginalization where we add the parameter also and then um, we apply the product rule on top of that and there uh, we make an assumption that um, the the probability that we get which is probability of the next observation given the parameter and the data we uh, assume that to be equivalent to probability of the next observation given just the parameter right we say that the data term doesn't have uh, an influence there. Could you just uh, explain that point uh, once again? Because I didn't quite catch that, or uh, I just want to know if my logic is uh, correct. So if you can explain that one. OK, so yeah, so this is something for the next lesson, right? Um, so I, I want to just keep it brief for this class. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I think I think what I uh, what you're referring to is that um, generally speaking, I, I, I say in this class, in probability theory class, in the future, in the rest of the class, every derivation, mm -hmm. you should be able to do it either with sum or product rule because some because in principle, everything in probability theory you can do with sum and product rules. Mm -hmm. um, plus, we we may we as as engineers we can make model assumptions and um, for instance a model assumption is that um, um, let's say the uh, the model assumption is that how do we a probability distribution I can have it over observations over model parameters and um, let's say uh, some 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 oh, 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 uh, yeah over um, uh, future data and and parameters and observations from the past, mm -hmm. and um, a model assumption could be that we say okay the in our model we're going to predict it just based on parameters in our model and these parameters values of the parameters, they're going to be affected by the past data, but we're not going to assume that there's going to be a direct relationship between the past data and future data. The pl we play it through the parameters. I think people who haven't done the next lesson, they will not see <laughs> what we're talking about here. So perhaps it's good if you post your question in Piazza under mm -hmm. the Bayesian machine learning uh, class. Then I can go through it, and so that everybody can uh, can, can understand it. Yeah, and then yep. it's also more say it's also recorded in an easier way for people to uh, to review. Got it. Yeah. Yep. So yep. could you re rephrase your question and put it uh, put it on Piazza? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sure yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Good. Are there any other questions? I, I would, I mean, it, it's certainly possible that uh, you have no questions because you haven't, uh, well, you haven't gotten time yet to, to read the chapter. Um, I, I would really try to encourage you, you to, do, to uh, do it then over the weekend and to try to keep up. Um, this class is really doable if you keep up. Um, and we give a lot of opportunities to ask questions, but we go, we kind of go through it sequentially, right? This is the moment to ask the questions about probability theory and uh, next class about the Bayesian machine learning class and then about factor graphs. So 
if you can just try to stay ahead one class I mean, and, and collect all your questions, then it will be real easy to go through this class. Much easier than um, when you just, let's say, wait until, uh, uh, I don't know, January and start studying for the exam. Uh, and then, yeah, you, you hit all your questions, right? And then you have to <laughs> find ways to get all your questions answered. So I, I would really encourage you to try to do that, right? Because then, uh, you, I mean, I can, uh, I can, I can always try to answer your question in Piazza, and I would really encourage students to answer the questions in Piazza. Um, but sometimes it's just easier if we talk about it, right? And 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 this is really the opportunity to talk about um, let's say probability theory. And next week we talk about the Bayesian machine learning class. So my advice to uh, pass this class or make it at least in a, a relatively uh, easy class is to to try to uh, to keep up. Okay, I see another question. I had a question about machine learning and the scientific inquiry loop. I noticed there's no learning loop between applications and the model. Uh, does that imply the model stops learning once it is deployed? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the it's a really good uh, point, actually. Um, so let me just uh, share my screen, and we can go through that. Okay, so this is the probability theory class, which is really not the one, right? So let's go to the if I can go to the other one. So um, here, I think. Yeah, so this this loop, I mean, um, it is it later on. Um, I mean, uh, it, the, the, I, I mean it's, it's just a, a cartoon, right? So don't take it very literally or very, uh, it's, it's like uh, this is the only way it goes. But, 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 but I, I, this is sort of like the scientific inquiry loop, right? Our goal in science is to build a model of the world. And how do we do that? Well, we uh, we design experiments, uh, we make actions onto the world, and then we we observe data. And uh, yeah, we we need to update our model, and we call that process learning, right? And as you now hopefully have seen a bit, that learning is uh, in order to learn, you need to have basically a prior distribution and data and data will be encoded in the likelihood function and then prior times likelihood divided by evidence will give you a posterior and so posterior distribution and yeah then you can look in this model and you can say oh what kind of uncertainties do i have in in my model still right um, i may have uh, parameters with very broad probability distributions and i may want to Say okay, I'm going to uh, design a trial that hopefully will get me the most information about uh, reducing the uncertainty about my parameters, and then so we can close the loop. And that's you could say uh, the scientific inquiry loop. Now then you can say okay, given that model, I can I can do a lot of things with that, right? I can try to predict the future, but as we will see later, we can do a regression and prediction. Um, and so that's the only thing really that I wanted to show uh, uh, that I mean here. But it's certainly true that if we are in an in an online situation, that while I'm doing my application, while I'm riding my bike or or, or something, I'm still updating my model, right? I'm still learning, right? So uh, in many um, uh, many applications, the trial design itself is the application, right? Um, in 
if I ride my bike, and let's say this model is your brain, um, um, then um, the, uh, and I try to stay upright, then the trial design are the actions that I make. So I, uh, I pedal and I move uh, my handlebar and I move my point of gravity a bit so I can stay upright. So the application of riding the bike is trial design here. So then you really only have this, but in in in, in engineering we 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 we, we, t we sometimes just take the model away and then we say okay now I'm going to use it uh, I don't know to classify images in a medical uh, image uh, classification application right but generally speaking uh, you are right uh, there's no uh, need that the, uh, um, that the model doesn't get updated once I go to applications. I'm not sure if that is what you asked, but that's what I got from your question. I see another question. Is there any other source where I can learn distributions well? You mean where you can learn probability, uh, um, where you can learn what about distributions? Where you can learn probability theory or where you can learn what kind of distributions, probability distributions there are? What is, uh, you, you can just speak up, perhaps, uh, Ken? Hey, uh, such as Gaussian distribution. Uh, because uh, I couldn't understand when uh, I studied the lecture notes. Yeah. So uh, I just really want to grasp. And uh, uh, I just wonder where can I find uh, more detailed information about more mathematical background about that? Well, the. Let's say the course book that I recommend is the book by Bishop, right? So the bit originally. Um, I, well, I think this uh, Bishop's book is the course book. There are, of course, hundreds of books, right? Uh, yeah, the, the pattern recognition and machine learning book. That's the book that I recommend that you uh, that you use. Uh, uh, I mean, you can also go to Wikipedia and learn about Gaussian distributions. But I think when I uh, started this class, the book wasn't there yet, but then when the book came out, I realized well, almost everything that I say in this class is also in that book. So, uh, and, and there's a lot more in the book. So, um, I recommend that you go. I mean, if you want to read more about it, uh, you can you should go to uh, to Bishop's book. It, at the beginning of I think most lectures, it also says, well, here's some passage in Bishop that corresponds to the current uh, lecture. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have, have thank have you. I, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Um, I'm just checking if if I have answered the questions so far, or if there is more questions that I've missed. Okay. Then I want to, um, well, uh, tell everybody that uh, there's still some people that haven't signed up for Piazza. Please sign up for Piazza if you haven't done so. I also posted on Piazza the uh, uh, the exam guide, basically what you can expect for the exam and how we're going to grade it. And um, so let let me know in the chat below the exam guide if if there's anything that you don't understand about that, anything unclear, because it should be clear to you now how and how we're going to grade the exam and, uh, and what you can expect. Yeah. Um, OK, anything else about probability theory? OK, then. Well, um, then I'm not going to keep you much longer. Um, it, it is my intention to keep the, the classes um, short because. I think that when you have the video guide and the lecture notes and Piazza, 
there is no need that I'm going to yeah, talk here for two full uh, hours, uh, bullet by bullet through the lecture notes. I think this, um, I prefer it if you take here an, uh, an active stance on learning and come to questions in this in these sessions uh, rather than me just uh, just overflowing you with uh, yeah basically repeating all the bullets in the in the lecture notes um, so that means that some of these classes will be very short I'm fine with that I hope you are as well um, if there are no more questions then I'm going to stop the recording I don't see any more questions so I'm going to stop the recording <laughs>